Hi everyone, welcome to this month's DIY with Beth. You guessed it, I'm Beth, ha! and this is DIY. And this month I wanted to show you how to make this super cute rope basket from a dollar store laundry basket. That's right, just a dollar. So I bought this basket at the dollar store and then I got a hundred yards of three eighths inch jute rope. And with a glue gun and a little scrap of material, I was able to create this little cutie that I'm thinking will probably do well in my daughter's living room of her new place and fill with all her dog toys because she's got a dog that's got a million toys. So I'm gonna show you how we get this from this. So obviously you're thinking, what's with all the pink um, material you have lying around? Well, my daughter's long, long, long been a fan of pink. So I have lots of pink scraps from things I've done in the past or had planned to do for her in the future, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna use some of those to make this for us, but I wanna show you the very first thing we're gonna do is we need to cut this lip off. So I'm going to take my razor knife and see that little bend in the plastic. Right along that edge, I'm going to cut it. So this is kind of hard to show you on video. How do I get the right angle? Okay, we'll go this way. Don't love it, but this is how I'll do it. I'm gonna come in here like this. Ooh, I'm gonna put my glasses on. And then I'm gonna come in here like this. And can you see where I'm right at the edge? I'm gonna push down on my razor knife because I wanna get a little poke through. So see, I've poked it through here. And from there, to decide the easiest way to do this. I'm gonna lay this right down on my chunk of wood. Let's see if I can turn it this way, if you can see a little better. So I find my slit with my razor knife and I do actually have a very sharp brand new blade. So I'm just keeping the tension the same on it. Now this is not going to cut probably perfectly straight because two things, it's an awkward angle. And the other thing is I'm the one cutting. So probably not gonna be straight, but that's okay. We've got a fix for that. Hey, I always have a fix for my many, 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 many imperfections. And look at this, it's going so smooth at the moment. Oh, did I word curse myself that I even went right off my little wood block. Cause once this knife gets in here and glides, if you can keep that constant pressure going, I don't want to cut my material. It does slide around pretty easy. The thing is with a razor knife, you always want to go slow and be careful and precise. You notice when I get to about here, I stop because I don't ever want to be bringing it towards me. If I should slip, I could cut myself pretty badly. Not what we want to do tonight. DIY myself on the way to the hospital is not the name of the show. So, there we go. We're not too far from where we started. All right, now this is kind of important that I try to match it up. Okay, that's the hardest of the hard parts. So as you can see, it's not fantastic. And this side, look, ha, <laughs> you can see where the handle was for sure. So I'm gonna come and clean this guy up. Sorry, is my hair in the way? It's always in the way of everything, it seems like. Just get those rough pieces off. 
And don't worry, we're gonna cover all of this, so none of this really matters. So don't drive yourself crazy going over and over and over things, because that's ultimately what it'll do is drive you crazy. And you see, this one's really bendy, and this one is too, but it definitely gets support from that rope, which I think is a pretty cool thing. So I've got my cloth. And I'm gonna, I have actually a lot of this left. That's nice. Okay, so this is how I measure, as in everything I do. So precise, right? Yeah, and this is gonna go all the way around my basket. So I'm gonna fold it back up just in half. Cause I want it to slide all the way around. And then I'm just gonna cut my material right on the fold. Now, if you're really precise, or gosh, please forgive me, if you're a seamstress, you probably would lay this down flat and cut it just so and might have ironed the crease or marked it with a scissor, or I'm sorry, with a um, marker or a pencil for cloth. I'm so sorry, I'm not that gal. So I did none of these things, <laughs> but it's okay, it's all right. So from here, all I did, because I want it to be, so my little detail is over the edge, but I only want it over this ridge. I'm going to, it like so and paper clip it because I found when doing this I had like the big ones that you would do multiple pages with like the big old black and silver clippies and they worked okay but they weren't as easy to slide out and on and maneuver like just a regular paper clip was so I switched back to these and all I do is bend it around so it's sitting right on that edge and clip it all the way around. Easy peasy. Just like so. And because this basket does bend and is maneuverable, I don't have to pleat it or do like a little fold like so and fold it over and secure it because it's going to wind its way right around the basket. And I know this because I just made one just like this. Cause you know, I have to do a test run cause we've all seen me have bloopers with things. I mean, that's life, right? I'm gonna come around here. Close to where we started. Of course, there's always a couple that get stuck together. And ta-da, all done. Now I've had my hot glue gun warming up. And I'm just gonna let go of this very first clip. Fold up the edge a little bit and put a little tiny bit of glue on here. And then lay my material over. I like to pat it, but I also end up with lots of burns. So be careful doing this. You don't wanna burn yourself. And then I keep the other clip on there, the paper clip, and I just come along, do a thin little line with my glue, get my material up and over it, lay it down and smooth it. And that paper clip. I love it because it's quick and easy. 
And it's that kind of like that instant gratification, which is part of the reason, you know, I feel like I switch up how my rooms look or stuff on the walls in the house, or I love to paint a room. And I know you guys are like, oh gosh, there she goes with the paint again. But it's a lot of bang for your buck, right? In one day's time, your room can totally have a transformation just because you change the color in there. And it doesn't have to be something that doesn't already go with different elements in your room, whether you have carpeting or specific color scheme for your couch, etc. It doesn't have to be an awkward, weird thing. Now, I'm gonna get to the end here and I'm gonna overlap, so I'm gonna go right on the top side of my cloth. And I'm gonna hold that so it seals. I will probably, you know what, I'm gonna do it right now. I was gonna say I will probably go through and cut off this little bit, but I'm actually going to do it right now. So precise, seamstresses everywhere are losing their minds. Using my little design on here, I kind of can cut a somewhat straight-ish line. Nothing's ever 100% though, is it? Maybe it is for the rest of you. And I am just gonna fold over this edge here. So I have my glue right on there and I'm going to fold this over and finish this edge. And along with burning my finger, I told you I couldn't do it without burning myself. It's also going to come through both layers of cloth because I put just enough on there that it's going to seal it. And then I just tuck my cloth in carefully because everything's not dry and any raw edge I tuck right down, fold it over. And I'm going to, because I don't like the way that's bulging, can you see that? I'm going to actually glue a little bit on this side just to hold it down. I'm going to use my wood block so I don't burn myself again today. But see, doesn't that look nice? Now you have a lined basket. Ta-da! Oh, but wait, there's more. So now we're going to grab our length of jute. And I'm going to look and see about where this is on my table. And this very bottom edge, just where it starts to curve, that's where we're going to attach the jute. And I'm going to do a nice line of glue and place my big blob. Can you see my blob? Place my end right on the blob. Now to get started, you have to hold this for 30-ish seconds because you want it to stick good. And the nice thing is it does stick pretty quick, cools off very quickly. And then I just do a nice thin line all around that bottom edge. The nice thing about this too is you can adjust this. Like you get it on here and you think, oh, that's a little low or I need to roll this up. And just by rolling that rope, you can control the placement. See, I slapped a little low, so I soaked it up with my jute, and then I slid the jute where I wanted it to be. And I actually feel like this is very, I don't know, very methodical, almost kind of hypnotic, like your mind can wander. You don't have to think about anything. It's not too serious. And then when you come here, you're gonna go right up and over close to the other one. The idea is to have it as tight as you can so it looks as straight as you can, but there's always a starting point, right? So it's never gonna be 100% even. That's where I would just stick that side not facing out towards my room. 
Then as I'm going along and I'm putting more glue, I'm not only putting it on the basket, but kind of on the top of that first row. Can you see that shiny? That's our glue. You want it to stick to the basket and the other row. Just makes for a stronger bond there. Looks like I'm running low on a glue stick. So I'm gonna pop this in here. And this is something I always do. I know you think it's combustible, it's cardboard. I do that because I usually have the feet down so it can drip down. But when I'm laying it on its side, quite often I'll just throw it on a little piece of wood and let it dribble like that. Either one, I have a nice buildup of wax, so I'm really not worried about it burning that cardboard because the hot end of the nozzle here doesn't quite get to it. So we're just gonna progress all the way around. I wanna get it to where I was doing it on these little grids so I can show you how quick it moves then too. Cause I know going a straight line around seems pretty easy peasy and then you think, oh, what about there? But that's actually um, super easy too. I did a little dot of glue about every other, every third um, one of these pieces. So it really, really went fast. Um, and the reason I say it was kind of hypnotic was because I didn't have to think about it. After a while, your brain just spatially does it for you. So I started here, one dot. I'm gonna go down two, another dot. And I'm keeping it snugged up both to the basket and the rope itself. Pull it around, pat, 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 and so on and so forth. Oh, I went three. Maybe not so hypnotic after all. And as you work your way around, then my mind starts to go like, oh, what else can I do with this? Could I? What could I add? I had thought even if you don't have material, you could take wide ribbon. I think I have some in here. Oh, here it is. I grabbed green because my daughter also likes green. I have this really pretty cabbagey, rose cabbagey polka dot. Like I love polka dots and roses. And um, But when I put it on here, it is see-through. So you could see through it. So if you don't have material and you don't want to go to the bother of it, even just buy a spool of ribbon and wrap that. Even with that done, that would still look pretty, wouldn't it? So you would just continue all the way around. Then when you get all the way done and decide maybe you do want to paint it. And this was a happy accident. Let me go back to this. I had ordered this. This actually took just over 50 feet of jute. So it's 3 8 inch because it's a nice thickness and the one I bought is also 3 8 inch because I had, or the one I bought extra of is 3 8 inch. So it's 3 8 inch so it's a nice thickness. So if you had that little thin craft jute it would take forever, right? You'd be winding forever. So I did that and of course this was all from one dye lot so it's all nice one solid color right really pretty I love that natural color ran out so close to the top and that's when I started contemplating do I wrap it in ribbon do I do something else but I ran out to the store and was able to find this and the perfect thing is although I wanted this color it's just the right amount it makes like a very cute band at the top right so I don't think that I would actually end up painting this one because it's kind of perfect how it is and it already has its own accent. But if I were going to paint one, this is how I would do it. I would grab my pink paint here because I'm gonna stick with the pink and I'm gonna give it a shake and it is just acrylic paint. It doesn't matter what finish. I had gloss in there. Once I paint jute, I doubt it'll be glossy. So don't even worry about that. Don't be too picky. Use what you have. I mean, we're make doers and DIYers. If you have the time and want to take the effort to go get other stuff, that's fine. 
I'm just literally using what I have here at home other than my jute <laughs> and my dollar store baskets. So then you get these nice foam brushes. And I really like these because of the angle on them. So I'm gonna leave that top row alone, but I'm gonna show you how I can snug right up to the top of this rope, not get it on this top row, all by using my edge of this brush. And they do absorb the paint, so you can kinda get it on here and mush it in. That is a technical term, mushing. Mush it right in there. So getting close to, but not on that top row. And you would just continue this all the way around. Obviously, I'm just rolling it on the table. You could stand it upright. So you can slide it all the way around as you're going. And when you were all done, you'd have this gorgeous basket that you customized and then did your pink accent on. So really, you can do anything you want to do with this. You can make it as elaborate as you want. You can make it as pared down as you want. I love this little guy with this little accent piece. You can even specifically look for that when you buy your jute, you can buy it in colors. If, you, if you're not into the, the lining, don't do it. I would buy one and look for a basket that didn't have handles on it. You can use a bowl. You know, you can buy those cute plastic bowls at the dollar store. I've seen people um, do it on the bowl, only you don't glue right to the bowl itself. They glue just to the jute so that they were able to pull the bowl out. I think I would still do it on the bowl and glue it to that so I would have that structure. I like that it's not as flimsy as this guy, um, but that's just me. The whole point is it can be anything you want it to be, as elaborate, as pared down, as fun, as simple, as time consuming as you would like it to be. And that's just one of the things that I love about DIY. Some things are a labor of love. I'm currently doing an ombre wall in what will be my office. That is a labor of love. It's been three walls of one color, one wall with three colors, and now is the fun part I get to blend. And that's the thing I love about DIY. It's yours. It can be anything you want it to be, and it's all your time and money spent in taking something for your house and making it part of your home. So I hope you guys have had a great time with me tonight and that even if it's something you wouldn't do yourself, that you can see how it could be a great asset in a home or a nice gift for a new homeowner, that it can just be a fun thing and a fun way to spend your time. You guys have a great rest of your night and I hope you have an even better tomorrow. I'll see you next month. Bye.